Hank. <clears throat> I love David's uh, mock-up of what the Earth is in regards to how we cohabit with it. Uh, the only problem with that particular mock-up is that Canada is brown. And as far as I know, I we do emit carbon monoxide and have all the nastiness that uh, industrialized countries create. We also have people that die, unless you folk believe that Canada is so cold that we never die, we just get preserved. And uh, there's people born every day. Now that's also for other countries that I haven't seen being active, which would mean that it's just a representation and not a truly hacker one. Uh, but it doesn't eliminate the fact that it's awesome and it's, it was well thought of. It's something that I never thought that would actually be done. And I love the quotes that are actually displayed at the top, one of which is Canada's most uh, respected and followed uh, environmental uh, leaders, David Suzuki, from the David Suzuki Foundation uh, out of BC, a man I've never gotten the chance to actually work with, but I've actually contacted when I was actually in, as an environmental technician, and I've got something in my eye. Oh, must be the CO2. <sighs> Anyways, the um, the effect of being green is a positive thing regardless of how you implement it. Now, small things always amount to big mountain. Uh, differences in how you decide to shop, for one. Uh, if you do your groceries and you decide to buy a bigger package instead of a smaller package in multiples due to the cost, you end up actually doing less waste going into your sanitary landfill for those that have sanitary landfills for your area. It's also less material that needs to be reused, recycled. But I'm still one who would like to see uh, grocery stores actually allow people to bring their own reusable containers, uh, such as bulk barns or uh, Costco's or Sam's, where you can actually bring, you buy one container, your original container, similar to a jug of distilled water and you can bring it back to have it refilled instead of returning it for recycling or reuse and then taking a new one and you keep on using it and using it and using it and using it not really creating more waste yourself because you're keeping the the, the waste to a minimum or you're keeping it neutral because everything that you're using such as reusable shopping bags for one are reusable uh, reusable containers those that you can actually bring to have a refill such as your Tim's coffee mug um, I'm trying to think of what else uh, that's about it that I can think of unfortunately nobody's come up with a good plan a business plan to actually make it work or make it feasible but I've always believed that if I wanted ketchup if I bought a, a Heinz bottle of ketchup and I actually decided to uh, bring it to the store to have a refill that they'd have a refill station for Heinz for example or St. Hubert's uh, gravy or barbecue sauce or peppercorn sauce or whatever that they actually have regardless of what it is there should be a way that we can actually make our shopping more environmentally friendly to uh, to the umpteenth degree but we're not doing it it's because a lot of stores actually don't want to invest in the initial cost that it would actually be uh, self-evident when you actually look at it because they no longer produce bags. I mean, look, Superstore moved away from the giving bags to their clients in the droves. Uh, they started selling them at five cents a bag. And then they moved away from the scent, the sale of the bags, but they've also moved away from having the bulk of their bags up front. They only have small bags here and there. They, they, they do want to encourage people to use their bags. And thank God, because I freaked out and decided to buy 10 shopping bags for some odd reason, thinking that my world was coming to an end, that I have to be green. And Well, at least I'll never, I'll never run out of black bags. Uh, in regards to other things that can be done, switching your light sources to something more environmentally friendly, opening your shutters when you have uh, sunlight coming in, taking full advantage of the heat and sun uh, coming in, um, 
unfortunately, they, a lot of it must be done at the beginning, especially if you're building a house. Uh, one word to the wise, if you actually have the money to be able to build your house, look for bamboo flooring. Look for a lot of the new, green, environmentally friendly ways of harvesting. Bamboo is a resource, is a wood resource that has many usages and it's a fast renewable resource compared to our deciduous forests here uh, in, in Canada and the, U the US. Hardwoods are hard to come by, they don't grow that fast. Same with uh, pines, red pine, cedar, Ce cedar even more, scrapes weed. We almost extinguished forests in the, in the years gone by and the ship era that we had in Canada and uh, the US. It was gone so bad at one point that they were dredging old cedars from the bottom of lakes. Cedar is a type of wood that will not degrade when it's actually submerged. It takes many, many years for it to be non-viable. And when you're talking about non-viable, you're talking about possibly over 30 years plus. But if you build a house and you have it orient, uh, you have the house uh, planned on a certain orientation to take the maximum of your sunlight to be able to power you uh, or to give you heat during winter uh, and coolness during summer uh, built-in shade with green areas that you've actually built around the the, the home um, a self home cooling system with something dug da deep down enough that it would actually allow uh, cool air to be pumped in and around and hot air to be kept also because in winter the effect is inverse when you're actually deep the, it's hotter air when it's summer it seems to be cooler uh, if you've never been in the mine at uh, 10,000 feet well you're not going to be digging that deep but when you go down it's very 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 stuffy and if it wasn't for the air exchange systems that they have in those mines regardless of what kind of mine it is it would be swelteringly deadly um, also, green power grids, for those that have the option to buy into the actual program with their power source or their power provider, uh, it, it requires an immediate high cost to invest. The technology is slowly decreasing in cost, but not as fast as our technology for YouTube or anything else that we use on computers. I wish it were faster because it would mean that a lot more people would take advantage of it for themselves because it means... A positive impact on their budget in the sense that they suddenly make money uh, if they make enough energy and they can sell it back into the grid it counteracts their power bill or at least decreases uh, decreases it depending on what they produce the more solar panels you have on your roof if you live in a sunny area the more power that you'd, that you'd be able to generate and sell the same goes for a uh, windmill power generating station for yourself if you've got the space on your property and it's windy enough to be able to use it otherwise you can't really take benefit of the others which are uh, natural water uh, damming where you don't affect any of it by just putting a wheel at a lower level somewhere in between the top of the actual waterfall to the bottom and you don't interact with it you just leave it be but that also means that you end up running out of water when there's a sudden drought <clears throat> so anyways enough of me uh, expounding on the virtues and the sins of humanity as always you're awesome and the fact that you stood in front of that thing and were amazed at the amount of blue dots and black dots well at least it shows that you're a true nerd fighter at heart have a nice one